There's lots of information on worms and worm composting that just ain't true. There are also some things that seem too crazy to be real but are actually true. We'll zoom through a list of facts you'll read on the interwebs about worms and let you know if they're true or just fake news. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. Hey gang, welcome back. You can find a lot of info on the web about worms, some true and some not. And I've got a list of the most common, we're gonna call them facts, about worms and let you know if they're true, sorta of true, or just fake news. So here we go. Okay, fact number one. Worms can eat 100% of their own weight each day. This is false. And not only is it false, it also leads new vermicomposters to blindly feed worms their own weight and food waste each day, which creates a sticky mess that can become toxic for the worms. If I were you, I would assume worms eat 25 to 33% of their own weight each day in both food waste and bedding, which is gonna be much lighter than food waste. But don't just feed on a preset schedule. Let your eyes and nose tell you if it's time to feed again or whether you should wait. If it appears the worms have eaten most of what you gave them on the last feeding, go ahead and feed again. But if you still see lots of unprocessed food waste, and especially if that food waste stinks, you do not feed more regardless of what you think you should be. Okay, fact number two. The juice at the bottom of a worm bin is worm tea. Again, this is false. The brown liquid you can drain out of the bottom of some urine farms is called leachate, which is normally the excess moisture released from food waste as it breaks down and works its way to the bottom of the bin. It doesn't get absorbed by the bedding. It's not worm tea, and it's definitely not worm pee. It's mystery juice. And while it's not necessarily harmful, excess moisture in a worm farm can produce anaerobic pockets of vermicompost. Those are pockets that lack oxygen, which can culture pathogens. So if you've got leachate, you might also have pathogens. But what you don't have is worm tea or extract. That's only made after a deliberate brewing process to strip the microbes off the surface area of your vermicompost, which has been suspended in water and then aerated. Number three, worms are hermaphrodites. This is true. Worms possess both male and female reproductive organs. When worms get it on, they wrap themselves around one another and pass sperm to each other into a ring of mucus which wraps around each worm. The female parts of the receiving worm deposit eggs into this ring of mucus, and after the worms separate, they wriggle out of that ring of mucus, which eventually forms a cocoon, which typically produces between three and five baby worms. It's a genius adaptation of nature, and it's 100% true. All right, fact number four. Worms will regenerate new body parts if you cut them in two. We call this one sort of true. Worms do have limited ability to regenerate new segments, but only at the tail. So if you take a composting worm like the red wiggler or Indian blue and cut off its tail, the part with the head and the fleshy band called the clitellum might eventually grow a new tail. But that tail you just cut off is gonna simply die. So don't be under the impression that cutting your red wigglers in half doubles your number of red wigglers. But there are worms called planarians that can regenerate themselves regardless of where you cut them, which means they can actually regrow their heads. And I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of nightmare fuel for me. This is especially crazy because there's an invasive type of a planarian called a hammerhead worm that can even regrow that hammer-shaped head. So if you find a hammerhead worm in your worm bin, you definitely want to remove it, put it in a plastic bag with salt or vinegar to kill it completely. What's even crazier about these worms is that researchers have found that planarians have some ability, and this is nuts, to retain some memory in their tissue like literally memory in their tissue. What they did is they took planarians, taught them to navigate through a maze multiple times to find food. Then they cut them in half and found that both worms could navigate the maze with the same success rate. I'm not gonna sleep well tonight. All right, fact number five, dumping worms on barren soil is gonna turn it into fertile soil. Absolutely. Wrong. Proved over and over again. Wrong. This is false. If your soil has no worms in it, adding worms of any type, and especially composting worms, to that dirt is gonna be pointless. Worms are a symptom of good soil and not the cause of it. They can make good soil better, but they won't turn compacted dirt into paradise. If you don't find any worms in your soil, it's because it's lacking in organic matter, which is what worms and microbes eat. So you're way better off adding manure, leaf mold, or compost to your soil to help attract native worms. The other thing is that composting worms aren't soil dwellers anyway. And even with good soil, you wouldn't find them digging around in your garden. Being honest about this myth has cost me thousands of dollars as a business owner in sales each year. I just don't wanna see people try to use worms this way and I stop them when they try. Okay, we're on to fact number six. 
Worm castings have lots of nutrients. This is false, but it's understandable why people think they do. The truth is that worm castings have low amounts of nitrogen and even lower amounts of the other macronutrients like potassium and phosphorus. But what they have are billions of nutrient cycling microbes that unlock the organic nitrogen and other nutrients in the soil and in the air. So plants can't use simple nitrogen in N form. They need it to be converted into the plant available forms of ammonium and nitrate. And that's exactly what the bacteria and worm castings do for your plants and soil. They unlock those nutrients. All right, fact number seven, worms have five hearts. So worms join the mighty squid, octopus, hagfish, and certain species of cockroaches in the multi-heart club. And worms do have five of them, so this is true. I always wondered about this though, because a lot of worms are kind of transparent, especially towards the tail. And when I hold them up to light, I can't see hearts anywhere. But their little blood pumpers, are, which are actually called aortic arches, are clustered near the less transparent head of the worm, not distributed evenly through the body like I thought before. Okay, some of you may be new to vermicomposting, but even if you're experienced and wouldn't mind a refresher on a few things, I'd like to send you the Worm Farm Roadmap, aka your Worm Bin Startup Guide. It's a soup to nuts guide for beginners, taking you from the choice of your worm farm all the way to how to best screen and then use your worm castings. It's an easy to read and visually appealing PDF. I'm really proud of this, this uh, product. And it's designed to take the mystery out of vermicomposting. This is a just the facts document that you can share with anyone. Click the link above my left shoulder and you can get that guide right now. All right, gang, if you've got any other facts that you'd like to see debunked or confirmed, leave a comment below and I'll get to it in the future. All right, we're gonna see you on the next video.